Hey you all and welcome to a new MC video. So in the previous two videos we saw how MC works in general, which messages are common to all the MC objects, so the multi-channel audio objects and how the voice allocation work. So now in this video we are going to actually put MC to work by creating a granular synthesizer. So MC is especially good for this task because to create a granular synthesizer we need polyphony because we need the different grains to play in at the same time and uh, we could do it with poly but doing this with MC it's much more straightforward and fast. So we're going to use MC for this application. Now let me show what we are going to achieve. So now I'm going to show you the original audio file, which is the is the TU file that comes with Max. So let's hear it. Sounds something like that. Now let's granularize it. And we can also change the pitch of this uh, of the synthesizer, so we can kind of play this sound file at different notes, intervals, and that's it. So let's see actually what are the parameters that we got. Now we got a pitch variation, and uh, let's see what it actually does. Basically, it changes the pitch of every single grain of sound. Then we got a random variation starting time in millisecond. Uh, we got a starting time here, and it means how many milliseconds before and after this starting time is going to sample our sound file. So in this case it's 100, if we say 1000 milliseconds, it's basically going to sample the whole audio file at random places. So if we put it very small, it's just going to sample in a range of minus 10 and plus 10 milliseconds from our starting point. Then we got our playback speed. If we say one is the original um, speed, as you can hear. It sounds pretty cool with the pitch variation. We can make it play faster or slower, even in reverse. So that's pretty cool. Then we got the grain duration, which mostly we want to leave at 50 milliseconds. This is how long is our grain. We can also make it longer to have different effects. And then we got the pitch. So what is the pitch at which we are playing those grains? And uh, cool, this is it. Now we also got the density parameter. That uh, means how many grains we are going to have at every time. So let's make it a bit higher. As you can see, we got a smaller number of grains. If we make it this even higher, then we got even less. And we're starting to distinguish the single grains in this way. Cool. If we make it very small, like one, then we got this kind of uh, wall of sound composed by all the single grains. And we're using 100 channels for the MC. So we got 100 different grains playing all at the same time. Uh, which is pretty cool. So before we start with the actual patching, I would like to remind you that you can find all my video tutorials that are on YouTube on my website. So federicofoderaro.com video tutorials and you can find them grouped by keywords. So for example, we got audio react um, patches, we got particles, we got shaders and so on, live stream and video images. So if you are looking for some topic in particular, I encourage you uh, not only to visit my YouTube channel, but to look on my website if this topic has already been covered. And if it has not been covered yet, then you can definitely write me and uh, I will see if I can manage to make a video about it. So that's the archive of all my video tutorials. Good. So let's start patching and let's see what we actually need for our granular synthesizer. Well, first we need a buffer, an audio buffer with a sound file that we are going to, to granulate. Cool. So audio buffer is one thing that we need. Then we need a window to make a fade in and a fade out for every one of those grains. So we need also a window. This is something common that you can find in every granular synthesizer. Good. Then we need an MC voice allocation system. This is something that we're going to create. 
Then we need also a waveform object to kind of visualize the waveform inside our buffer. Then we need some parameters for our synthesizer. Good, so this is basically it for the moment. So let's start with the first thing, which is our audio buffer. And uh, let's create it. So we are going to create a buffer object. We are going to create it. Uh, We're going to name it my cool Buffy. And uh, this is it. Maybe let's assign it a default audio file. Let's, for example, take this is that you file. So I'm just going to write inside is that you, which is the name of our file. Now, if I double click on this buffer, uh, it's going to show us that the file is actually loaded. As you can see, it's a stereo audio file. Great. Uh, let's maybe create a drop file object so we can simply drag and drop a file inside this object and it's going to give us the path inside the computer so this object can read it. So let's say prepend replace and the replace is a command for the buffer object that means basically replace whatever you have inside and with a new audio file. So if I take now a new audio file like Anton and now it read Anton. Good. Then what we need is also some information about this buffer, especially we need to know how long is this buffer because this is going to be useful then um, in the algorithm. So we need for that an info object which takes some information about a buffer. We need, we need to tell it which buffer we want to get information about. So my cool buffy is the name of our buffer. And whenever we load an audio file into our buffer, let me give it a try. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can see that it gives us a bang. Now we can use this bang to get some information from the info object because every time the info object receives a bang it's going to send us some information on this buffer out from its outputs. So the information we're interested in is the total time in millisecond of this buffer. So we can send a bang to this uh, info object or load a new audio file inside um, the buffer. And this is going to give us the duration in millisecond of this audio file. Very well. So for the moment, that's it. So let's now create a waveform object to visualize actually the waveform contained inside our buffer. So let's create this object called waveform. Uh, we need to give it a buffer name attribute, uh, which is the name of our buffer. So he knows that he has to visualize that buffer. So my cool buffy. And this is it. By default, it doesn't represent the left and right channel, but actually for us, it's okay like that. So this is the waveform object with a tilde, and I gave it the buffernate attribute to my cool buffy. It's now visualizing the audio file contained inside our buffer. Cool, that's great. Let's now proceed to play actually this audio file. And we will play it using the MC play object. So this is the MC version of the play object. So if we send this object the output of a line object, so basically a ramp of numbers, and we say, uh, let's actually create an MC line because we want to drive a um, multi-channel output. So we can say start from zero and go to one millisecond in one millisecond. So zero is our starting point in millisecond inside the file, so basically the beginning of the file. Uh, one, the first 1000, it's where we want to arrive in millisecond. And the second 1000 is how much time we need to get there. So how much time in millisecond to get there. So we will start from the beginning of the file, we will arrive at one second in the file, so around here, in one second. So if we send a message at 0, 1000 to 1000 to the MC line, the MC play will play the first second of this file. Um, actually, in order for it to play, we need to tell it which buffer it should read. So let's give it the name of our buffer, which is my cool buffy. Okay, cool. Um, let's actually create an MC duck, as we did in the previous videos, because we need that uh, to activate the audio in our window. So let's create a start window message for our MC duck. Let's also create a stop in case we want to stop the audio. And let's try to activate the audio into our patch. Uh, let's maybe create an MC scope object to check if the MC play is actually working. So let's try. And cool. Yeah, as you can see, it's reading the first second of our audio file. In case we will give it the message go from zero to, to 100 milliseconds in one second, 
it will mean that it will play the file slower than its original playback speed. Um, let's actually try to hear that out. So let's create an object, let's create the MC stereo object. And let's give it the auto gain attribute set to one. And uh, okay, let's connect this to the MC duck and see if we can hear something. So I will now click on this message box. It's coming out only from my left speaker because uh, I think we need to give it to the MC Stereo a panning to set it in the center, otherwise it's automatically going to pan them all on the left side for some reason. So let's create an MC SIG object. So this will basically just be a multi-channel signal as we saw in the previous videos. And let's give it the value of 0 0.5. So now it should put our sound file in the center of our audio scene. So yeah, seems to be working. So as you can hear, it's playing it in one second, 100 millisecond of file. So the resulting effect will be that the pitch is lowered. That's how uh, the pitch parameter actually works in our finished granular synthesizer. So let's hear it again. Nice, so, so by default, the MC objects will have 16 channels. If you want to have more channels, as we said, we have to give to the MC objects the attribute chance followed by our desired number of channels. So let's say that we want 100 channels. Now, if I just give it to the MC line, I think the MC play is automatically going to adapt and have also 100 channels. So let's give it a try. Okay, it doesn't change anything because they're all playing with the same uh, parameters, so. We don't really hear the difference. Good. Let's now use the MC target object to play all the different voices, so the, all the 100 voices of this MC line, one at a time. So we will just cycle through those voices. So let's create an MC target object. Great. This is the message that we want to send to our line object. And in the right inlet, we need to send an integer that represents to which instance we want to set it. So if we say zero is going to send it to all the instances, as we saw also in the previous video. If we say one, it's only going to send it to one instance. But since uh, the auto gain attribute is going to divide every instance by 100, I think we don't even hear it. So let's create the MC meter object to check if it's actually working. So let's connect it after the MC play. And let's see what we're getting out. Yeah, exactly. We can see that one instance is actually playing, although we cannot hear it. Let's maybe say that should arrive to 1000 in 1000, so we will have the original pitch. Yeah, it's very, it's very low volume, but it's actually working. So we can cycle through all the instances and play them one after the other. We will actually also use the MC voice allocator object in order to let Max handle this automatically, so our voice is allocation. And I think we are going to see this in the next video. So check my website for uh, more tutorials, especially about Jitter, and don't miss the next video, which is coming right after this one. Ciao, ciao.